what's up YouTube JP here and today we're going to be looking at the game grid 2 and what it is is a small Android TV like box that comes with two controllers jam-packed with old retro games so without further delay let's dive in so let's quickly get the boring part out of the way. GameGrid sent me this device free of charge for review, but all the opinions are my own and nobody else's. So first of all, let's talk about what the GameGrid 2 actually is. So it's a small device and it kind of looks like an Android TV box. Now, unlike an Android TV box, it's dedicated for retro gaming and emulation. And we'll get to how good that is later on in the video. Now of course there's loads of different ways to play your old classic games like the Mega Drive, SNES and NES etc on new hardware. Whether you're using a PC to emulate or you're building a Raspberry Pi setup or modifying your old console like the Nintendo Switch purely for retro gaming just as you've probably seen with the retro ROM shop. But for those people that played the classics back in the day and maybe they don't play games anymore and they want to revisit the classics for as little money and as little effort as possible and that's where the game grid 2 comes in so as always we're going to do an unboxing but before we do that i just want to let you guys know that i'm going to be giving this game grid 2 away to someone on the patreon now if you haven't joined the patreon yet there'll be a link in the description below but it only costs one pound or one dollar a month but what do you get for your one pound or one dollar a month well, I believe that my Patreon has really good value. And that's mainly because you get access to all the Switch modding videos. You also get entered into all the giveaways. So obviously we're going to give the Game Grid 2 away, but we've also given away PS5 Pro controllers, Switch Pro controllers, etc. And we're going to be doing more giveaways soon. So you get entered into the giveaways. You'll also get Discord perks. So in the description below is a link to the Alien Retro Gaming Discord server and we've now got over 20,000 members. So if you join the Patreon you'll also get access to hidden Discord channels and customization perks. So that's enough about that, let's get on with unboxing this Game Grid 2 and see what you get in the box. So here's the box for the Game Grid 2 and as you look around it it's going to say 100,000 plus games to wireless controllers and then a list of everything that's in the box here. Now I will tell you now if batteries are not included. So you're going to need six AAA batteries for the remote and the two wireless pads. So opening it up you'll see the device itself. Now there's something hidden under the device and you don't want to lose it. It's the USB for the wireless controllers. So make sure you take that out and don't throw it away in the box. Next, we have the two wireless controllers, and they look like PS2 controllers, and they're very light. There's an on and off switch at the bottom, and then if you take the back off, you'll see where you need to put two AAA batteries. Obviously, I recommend getting some rechargeable ones, so you're not going through loads of batteries. And then, of course, we have the second controller. This is exactly the same as the first one. Now they are very light, they do feel a little bit cheap, but spoiler alert, I never had any problems with them. They actually worked really well. Next we have some paperwork and it's just telling you how to get things set up. But this is really easy to do, it's just plug in the HDMI, plug the power in and away you go. Next we have a HDMI cable and then we have the infrared remote control. Now if you boot up this device and remove the micro SD card it'll actually boot to Android TV. Again you need two AAA batteries for this but then I guess you could use it for watching YouTube etc. And then we have the power cable. Now let's just take a quick look to see how it's rated and it's 12 volts, 1 amp, 12 watts. More than enough to power this device. So let's have a look at the device itself and see what kind of connectivity it's got. So at the front you can see that infrared sensor there. 
on the right side there's nothing on the back you have a power button where the power connects you've got an AV and HDMI and an Ethernet port on this side you've got two USB ports and that micro SD card slot now the micro SD card that's included in this is 64 gigabytes so that is basically where EMU elect RetroArch and all those ROMs are going to be sitting like I said before if you power this device on without that micro SD card connected you're just going to boot to the normal Android TV interface now one thing you can't forget to do is that little USB dongle is going to plug into one of the USB ports for these two controllers so I just chucked it in one of the USB ports and because it's quite low profile it doesn't stick out very much so it's not like a full-on USB pen intrusive kind of design and I think the device looks pretty smart so that was just a quick look at what you get in the box but there's one thing I want to go over before we actually have a look fire it up and play some games and that's to talk about the price now I've spoken to a few people regarding this device and a couple of them said it's too expensive being just under $140 for what you get but I don't think that's true at all have you seen the prices of Raspberry Pi 4s so someone said to me you'd be better off building a Raspberry Pi 4 that's only if you know what you're doing now I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here and this is a Ned's Pi 4 case now the cost to build this you're probably looking at about $300 because it is not cheap to buy a Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment especially with all the silicon shortages etc so for me this is only good if you have a lot more money to spend and you don't mind doing all the grunt work because you're going to have to source all the ROMs and get it all set up yourself. Now, yes, you can use a pre-made image from Arcade Punks, and we're going to be going over Arcade Punks in a future video. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. So yes, you can buy other devices with more performance, but with more performance comes more costs. For example, you could buy a mini PC like this. This is basically the specs of a Steam Deck, but in a mini PC form factor. This will cost you about $350, but still you'd have to get the software, get all the ROMs and then buy control pads to use with it. I think that's where a lot of people kind of get a bit mixed up because this device comes with everything. And not only is it a gaming device, if you take the SD card out, which I'll show you a little bit later on, you can use it as an Android TV box. You can put Plex on there, you can watch YouTube on there, so it's more of a two-in-one device and basically that's why you get a remote control with it so you're getting two devices in one now i definitely think this device has a place in the market because if i wasn't into gaming anymore say i didn't have a pc i didn't have a console or anything but i wanted to play the classics because my era is the mega drive that's when i first really got into gaming and this device will play all the Mega Drive games absolutely flawlessly. So while we're talking about games, let's get it all fired up, have a look to see what you get on there, how many games you get for each system, and then we'll play a couple of games to see how it performs. So as you can see we're here on the main title screen and as you can see all the systems are listed on the right so we have links 103 games if we go in here you can see on the left hand side you have a screenshot and then the cover art and it'll tell you a bit about the game and as we're scrolling through you can see all of those 103 games so i think what we'll do is we'll have a look to see how many games are available for each system 
and then we'll probably play a few of the more demanding ones. Because let's face it, the Commodore 64, Amiga, Mega Drive, SNES, NES, those kind of things, I expect them to run flawlessly. So Atari 7800, we have 64 games. For Atari ST, we have 2,847 games. Atari 5200, we have 73 games. Atari 800, we have 5,097 games. Atari 2600, we have 693 games. Final Burn Alpha has 96 games. And then we've got the Arcade Classics. There's 953 games here. CPC, we have 1,955 games. And then we have our favourites category where we can put favourites in. And then of course we've got the all games, 34,196 games. PSP, we have 255 games. PlayStation 1, we have 61 games. Neo Geo, 174. ZX Spectrum, we have 5,252 games. Naomi, we have 6 games. And for the Dreamcast, we have just 4 games. Is that 4 games or is that 9 games? Let's have a look. 4 games. For the Sega 32X, we have 37 games. Now, one of my favourite systems of all time, the Sega Mega Drive has 1,193 games. The Sega Game Gear, we have 263 games. The Sega Genesis, which is what the Mega Drive was called in America, it has 890 games. The Sega Master System, we have 492 games. The Sega SG-1000, we've got 81 games. The Atomus Wave, we've got 7 games. And then the Nintendo DS, we have 25 games. Now, I'm a bit sceptical of how Nintendo DS is going to run, but this is going to be one we're going to try out. Pokemon Mini, we have 26 games. Game Boy Advance, we have 1,081 games. For the Game Boy Color, we have 598 games. And another one that I'm a bit sceptical about is the Nintendo 64. We have 193 games here. For the Virtual Boy, we have 29 games. For the Super Nintendo, we have 1,232 games. The Game Boy has 493 games. For the Family Computer Disk System, we have 229 games. For the NES, we have 2,611 games. For Nintendo Game & Watch Collection, we've got 53 games. And then for the Super Graphics, we've got 5 games. For the CD-ROM system, there's only 2 games in here. Then for the PC Engine, we've got 290 games. For the Vectrix, we've got 71 games. For the MSX2, 82 games and then for the MSX 668 games for the Amiga we've got 1057 games and then for the Commodore 64 we've got 4978 games so that's just a quick look at all the systems and how many games there are but I want to try some out so one of the systems that I feel like is not going to run so great is the PSP so first of all, let's have a quick look at one of those games. And of course, we're going to use God of War Chains of Olympus, because this is one of the harder games to run on the PSP. So I dare say that PSP is actually going to run pretty well on here. So let's take a look at another console. Now I know PlayStation isn't that demanding so there's no need to check that out. And same with Dreamcast. The emulator for Dreamcast is pretty good now. 
and this is using EMU Alec which is basically using RetroArch in the background so I expect those to run really well. Now one of the systems that I don't think is going to run very well is Nintendo DS. So let's have a quick look at a DS game and see how it runs. So another system that I thought was going to really struggle would be Nintendo 64. But so far so good, things are actually working out pretty well on this little system. So let's give this game a go. Now the Nintendo 64 is one of those systems that's really hard to emulate, especially on lower powered systems. Ah, Mr. Bond, we have a safety deposit box waiting for you. Do you have an appointment, sir? I'm afraid no one gets to see Mr. Lachaise without an appointment, sir. So as you can hear, the sound isn't very great and there is some missed frames. Now this is one of the better running games for the N64. I tried a couple more games after this off camera and it was basically unplayable. So if you're going to get this device, just don't expect it to play N64 games very well. So let's quickly play a game that I know is going to run great and that's Streets of Rage on the Mega Drive. So as you can see from the most part, this is a really good experience. Now unfortunately, the likes of Nintendo 64, I wouldn't get this device if you just want to play N64, because it's just not quite powerful enough. And that's no fault of the device itself, it's just the way the N64 was engineered. So what's my overall thoughts and feelings on this device? Well, I do think it has a place in the market, like I said, and I do think it brings real good value to people that want to play some of the older classic games, like your PlayStation and before. The N64 doesn't work great, so just don't buy this if you want to play N64 games on it. But if you want to play any of the other games, you're going to have a great experience. Now, as I said, I'm going to be giving this Game Grid 2 away on the 12th of August. So make sure you've signed up for Patreon and you join the Discord server. Both will be linked below and then I'll pick someone at random through the Google random number generator to keep things fair. And then I'll do a live stream on Discord picking the winner. So if you want to get entered into that, join the Discord, join the Patreon and you will be entered into that competition as long as you join before the 11th of August. So I'm going to end the video here, but if you enjoy my content, Please do me a favour, like the video, subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. I'm JP, you've been watching Alien Retro Gaming and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.